Lysosomal storage diseases comprise a large group of disorders. They are individually rare, but collectively relatively common, approaching a prevalence of 1 in 5,000. Each disorder is caused by a specific enzyme defect leading to accumulation of specific macromolecules. The diseases tend to be chronic and progressive. The hallmark of the lysosomal storage diseases is the accumulation of enlarged lysosomes within swollen cells, as illustrated here. This can be compared to a normal cell, as illustrated here. These cellular accumulations are typically pervasive, involving multiple organ systems. In Tay-Sachs disease, there is abnormal storage of gangliosides. We have previously shown how gangliosides are derived from the basic ceramide molecule. Gangliosides have complex sugars added to them, such as N-acetylgalactosamine, abbreviated as GALNAC, and N-acetylneuraminic acid, or NANA. The GALNAC molecule is critical to Tay-Sachs disease. Normal degradation of the gangliocide removes the GALNAC molecule by the enzymatic action of hexosaminidase A. When mutations disrupt the normal activity of this enzyme, the GALNAC molecule cannot be removed, and the gangliocide thus cannot be degraded. Massive accumulation of this gangliocide in the lysosomes of brain neurons occurs in Tay-Sachs disease. The hexosaminidase A enzyme is composed of two protein subunits, alpha and beta. Mutations in the alpha subunit cause Tay-Sachs disease. This leads to accumulation of gangliosides in the brain, as previously illustrated. Diagnosis can be confirmed either by enzyme analysis or mutation analysis of the hexosaminidase A gene. In the severe infantile form of Tay-Sachs disease, which is the most common, there is less than 0.5% enzymatic activity. However, there are less severe types of Tay-Sachs disease with higher, but still severely reduced enzyme activity. Symptoms of Tay-Sachs are not present at the time of birth, but in the first months of life there may be an exaggerated startle reflex. By 6 to 12 months, however, it is clear that muscle tone is diminished and that the normal rate of neurological development has slowed. Eye response is diminished and there is poor visual tracking. Examination of the retina shows a red spot in the macula. By one year of age, all children with the infantile form are severely impaired, many with seizures and impaired swallowing. Head size may be enlarged due to the effects of stored gangliosides. The cherry red spot is a distinctive feature of Tay-Sachs disease. This phenomenon occurs in the retina because gangliosides accumulate in the periphery around the macula, which is an area of concentrated retinal cells. Tay-Sachs disease is inherited as an autosomal recessive disorder in which each parent is an asymptomatic carrier. There is a high carrier frequency in the Ashkenazi Jewish population, with the carrier rate being much lower in other populations. Carriers have an intermediate degree of enzyme activity, but still have sufficient activity for normal functioning. DNA mutation analysis provides the most effective method to detect carriers and is superior to enzymatic analysis, which can be subject to false positive results due to enzyme pseudodeficiency. Prenatal detection is also possible. Treatment of Tay-Sachs disease has been very challenging. Replacement of the enzyme is problematic because of issues posed by the blood-brain barrier, which prevents passage of the enzyme into the brain. Other possible avenues for therapy involve small molecule chaperone agents, as well as attempts to deliver the hexosaminidase gene to brain cells by use of recombinant adenoviral vectors. Other strategies are likely to emerge over time.